Speakies YRN here, gonna be going over Latibo, which is the newest FDA approved neuromodulator on the market. Um, we're gonna be talking about basically how to utilize this neuromodulator effectively, as it is a little bit different than other neuromodulators on the market. I currently have used more Latibo than anyone in the United States, and so I wanna tell you what I've found about the product, how to use it, and how to keep your patients happy. Um, so I believe that Latibo is a little bit more of a, pr a precise neuromodulator. It's gonna kinda of sit in between Botox and Javo, if you're familiar with those. I do believe, um, I think I've injected well over 150 vials so far since launch. Um, I do believe that it has about a 1.75 to 1.85 centimeter spread comparatively to Botox, which is gonna be in the two centimeter spread. And then I personally believe that Javo is about 1.65 to 1.75 centimeter spread. So it's right in the, between those um, top neuromodulators. Now, that being said, I believe that it's something that you have to be very precise with how you're injecting. We really need to target the neuromuscular junction. If you are not getting full clearance with Latibo, it means that you're injecting it incorrectly. It's not the neuromodulator. It's not that it doesn't work. All neuromodulators work. It's how you're going to inject the product and how they all work a little differently. So what is really important with Latibo is that we need to be targeting that neuromuscular junction. What I mean by that is when we're addressing the upper portion of the frontalis um, above the line of convergence, all your injection points should be down to periosteum deep. We're gonna be basically touching bone there. And that's because that neuromuscular junction is on the back side of that frontalis muscle, okay? And then when we're talking about the glabellar complex, a lot of what people in, in injectables have been taught is that we're gonna be injecting kind of here and going way out here. Glabellar complex is not lateral in this area. The corrugators are actually here. The procerus is where that neuromuscular junction and where that muscle originates is in the procerus. And so we're gonna be targeting that area deep. And if you really want good glabellar com uh, complex clearance, you're gonna target that deep there down to bone, also in the head of the eyebrow, deep down to bone. Your uh, corrugators in this area, basically what they do is they kind of float up off the bone. We're deeply attached and affixed here. And then what happens is that muscle floats up off and basically is kind of floating out there. So if you're doing a five point injection with Latibo, your outer injections of the corrugators should actually be at an angle, angled up. Um, or down depending on how you're coming in at that tail of the corrugator and it should actually be more superficial. I like to think of it as a linear thread that I'm treating that muscle um, that's actually kind of floating out off of that. So deep on the procerus, deep right in here into the heads of the eyebrows and then we're gonna come right outside here if they have a lot of corrugator action. I will tell you that you can get pretty much full clearance on everybody with a appropriate three-point injection if you're doing it correctly and you're actually touching bone. Most of us were taught to inject way up here and then out. That's incorrect. We are actually not even targeting that muscle. The procerus, the origin of that muscle and where that nerve impulse actually passes through to tell that muscle to contract happens at the origin of the muscle, which is at the bridge of the nose, which is where that procerus is. If you are not treating the procerus correctly, you will not get clearance in the glabellar complex. So if you're not treating deep enough and actually low enough, you will not get clearance through that area, okay? So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I inject. So we are going to be doing, so first we're gonna start here. Um, so basically I like to have them animate, so do a mad face. She's pretty well treated, she comes to see me regularly, but you can see where that procerus muscle is active there. I'm going directly into that crease. So quick poke, honey, deep down to periosteum, and I'm gonna deposit, we're doing um, about four units there. And then I'm gonna come right in here. I like to hook my thumb into that area, deep down here, down touch bone, do another four. If I'm gonna hit the corrugator here, I will be out and I like to angle out, and I'm gonna come a little superficial, quick poke out, and I actually, as I'm withdrawing my needle, I'm actually depositing tox there too. And that way it's kind of floating back through that muscle, and we'll get that cleared nicely. 
and then same thing. So I'm actually gonna kind of lift so I can see that muscle here. Some people, you don't need to do that. You can see it right away. Quick poke, deep. And then relax. Do that again, a little mad face. She really doesn't have a ton of movement out here. So this is just basically for the video. Now, if I have somebody that's really deep in here, I might come in and do one more injection point a little bit higher, maybe two units. That's probably the max. Most of the time for me with Latibo, I'm doing a three point injection deep down to the periosteum, okay? Now we're gonna do the frontalis, which is where I think a lot of people are having trouble with the newer um, neuromodulators on the market. And not even newer, they're just, this is a neuromodulator that's been around for a very long time overseas. We're just getting it here in the US. So with here, above the line of convergence, so go ahead and raise your eyebrows and you can actually see her line of convergence here. Anything above this is gonna be down to periosteum. Anything below, I'm gonna come very superficial. These will not last very long because we're not going deep, but we're also not gonna drop her eyebrows. And when I treat my patients, it's more important for me to get a nice opening of the eye than it is to be completely flat through the forehead. And sometimes that's a conversation that I have with my patients is what's, what's their goals, you know? Um, are we actually treating the forehead to where they have zero movement or do they wanna have higher brows? You can't have both, it's just not a thing. So raise all the way up. So I'm gonna come up here, down to bone, two units here, another one. And she will actually feel a little bit of a crunch. Mm -hmm. If they don't feel a crunch in this area, you're probably not deep enough. I actually can usually, and I'm gonna come right here to the, her hairline because she does have a little bit of extra pull here. And then when I come in to the lower portion of the frontalis area or muscle, raise all the way up. Here where this is usually where we have to adjust. If she had lines that ran all the way into the temple, I could actually inject neuromodulator way out into here. She really doesn't, she stops in this area. So I'm gonna pop right here and I'm just gonna deposit one unit there very superficially. So we're gonna go right here and we're just gonna drop that in there. That's gonna help. And then same thing over here. And then I do believe that Latibo kicks in, starts kicking in almost immediately, usually within 24 hours. Now, that being said, um, I do think that it actually kicks in pretty quickly, about three to five days, you're gonna start seeing that. And then I th it feels like to me, it's kind of goes on a bell curve where it goes back to like a normal toxin that's starting to kick into the system. And then about seven to 12 days, seven to 14 days is when you're getting that final clearance. So you do need a full two weeks. So just because it starts to kick in in three days does not mean it's fully set at that time, in my opinion. Now we're going to do her crow's feet. And so for here, I'm actually gonna rotate so the camera can see that. Smile real big. I have treated her this low. I would not recommend treating that low on people that you're not comfortable with just so that we don't impair any type of smiling. Raise your eyebrows all the way up. Perfect. Now, because it has a little more spread than a Javo, which is what I am really familiar with as Javo, I will kind of pull my brow lift injection points a little bit more lateral so that I'm not gonna have any lid ptosis or anything like that. Um, because Javo, I could come a little bit more medial. Latibo, I actually pull out my injection point just a little bit lateral to that. And then now we're going to do her platysmal muscle. So I am actually gonna come this way. The platysmal muscle is like a long sheet of paper that attaches at the mandible. It goes down to the clavicle and its whole job is to pull down. So as we age, this starts to happen and we get what's basically that pregel sulcus. And this just starts to kind of bring our mid face volume down a little bit. So I'm actually gonna come through here really superficial. Your Nefertiti lift can almost be like a TB. So that's too deep right there. I'm actually gonna back out my needle and I'm gonna deposit two units. Here again, some people do their Nefertiti lift and they also inject along the lower portion of the um, jawline. I don't because you can have a problem with swallowing in that area and that is very important. So we don't need that. Now we're gonna do her platysmal muscle. So try to like grimace a little bit with your lower face. I know this is a hard one. Try to go like eat, there it is. So 
right here she's got that we're going to just drop i like to only treat the heads of the platysmal muscle this will help kind of slim that a little bit perfect and then we'll do your other side so i'm going to rotate you a little bit okay quick poke I've got good music going on too. Right. If you go too deep on the Nefertiti lift or the platysmal muscle, what will happen is nothing. You will actually have passed through that muscle. So if you're not getting a result from treating the lower face with Latibo, it's because your injection point is incorrect, meaning that you're probably going too deep and you're passing through that muscle and it's not able to target that. So you're basically just depositing units that are not able to help that muscle with the contraction or to impair the contraction. So it's very important. So you can see here, you can actually see almost like a little wheel there almost like a tb which is where you want to be you want to be very superficial when i run my finger across that i can feel the little um, blebs of tox there so and then try to grimace again <laughs> sorry we'll relax again and then she's actually going to be out in this area oops i come out from the side when i'm doing treating my platysmal muscle and that's because most of us want to come in from the front when you see that band but you are more likely to miss that muscle if you're coming in from the front angle. If you're coming in from the side, you're gonna be able to deposit it right into that muscle. It makes it much more effective instead of just hoping that you're in that muscle. So um, now we'll do your eye and you're done. All right, honey, smile real big, quick poke. And around the crow's feet, you're always gonna be superficial. It's a sphincter, the orbicularis oculi is a muscle that just kind of runs all the way around the eye. Relax and then raise your eyebrows all the way up. And so your injection points are gonna be superficial. It's not a deep muscle. So you shouldn't be going too deep on that. And that's it. That's Latibo on a female. We're gonna do one on a male too. So um, we will have results in about two full weeks. I have everyone come back and see me, but that's just my policy at two weeks. I like to see how they're um, reacting to everything and hopefully that helps. So Thanks. now we have a male patient here with us. We're gonna be talking about Latibo, and this is really um, difficult anatomy to treat, so we thought this was a great case for you guys to kind of see. So raise your eyebrows all the way up. I do treat him regularly too. Now you can see his line of convergence is right in here, right? Which means he's at high risk for ptosis, optosis. Um, or lid ptosis or even um, just heaviness. He has been treated elsewhere in the past and he did have a really heavy feeling where it was like you couldn't lift your eyes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I am actually, this type of anatomy, I am extremely conservative with how I place my talks, even though he has really deep set lines um, we will get there and part of that's probably going to be microneedling and things like that but when I am going to be dosing him his main and you can see the bulk here of the glabellar complex this is really where he's got the heaviness through here because that muscle is so strong he's a big guy strong muscles so we want to dose accordingly in that glabellar complex majority of my units are going to go in here then I'm gonna come in here and try to treat this. You can see here, he doesn't really have a lot of motion here. And you have to also consider that on men, if I take a neuromodulator like Latibo or anything on the market and I place it into the hairline, what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause him to look more recessed, okay? So I have to be cognizant and aware where I'm placing my tox and what kind of patient I have in front of me. It, he doesn't have a lot of receding hairline, but if he did, and it's somebody that's really self-conscious of that, if I go and I place talks here and here, that's actually gonna do this with the forehead and make him look more recessed, okay? So make sure you're looking at the whole picture when you're dosing. Um, so here, what I'm gonna do, you can see, do a mad face. I know it's hard, he's <laughs> like perfect. Yeah, hold that for one second. So I'm actually gonna have my one injection point here. You can see where that procerus muscle is, and that's where the attachment is, is right here. That's where I'm gonna place my um, tox there, and then we're gonna come in here. I am gonna come up into his uh, corrugators, do a mad face again there. So he's just 
bulk through here. So we're gonna try to get this out for him. I am gonna do another injection point on him because he has different anatomy. And then right in here into that head of the eyebrow and then up in here too. These injection points should be on periosteum. That's gonna be on bone. Here, that muscle is not deeply affixed to the bone. What that muscle does is it attaches down deep here and that muscle floats up in this area. So if you inject too deep here, you're passing through that muscle, you're not gonna treat those corrugators effectively. And a lot of people are taught to treat way over here for corrugators. There is no corrugator in this area. This is frontalis. If you're injecting into this area, that's frontalis, that is not a corrugator. Okay, so really important to understand your anatomy and know where you're injecting. So we're gonna do a little bit of a modified injection point and that's based on his anatomy. It would be great if we could just inject everybody the same, we can't. Okay, so you have to be cognizant of that. Your depth of where you're placing the tox is really important, the amount of units and the patient's personal anatomy. Now when I go into the forehead, raise your eyebrows all the way up. So I am gonna come in over here. We're gonna inject some units here, here, here now he's had heaviness in the past right mm -hmm. so i am going to come in here and inject these two areas and then i'm also going to be um, a little bit more aggressive and do half a unit right here extremely superficial okay that's just going to help soften that line so he doesn't get the spocking without heaviness okay and so here you never want to be too deep now if you notice he also has these uh, lines here, these are sleep lines. So if you have somebody coming in and they're saying, what is that line? Why do I have these? I never had these before since I had Botox, all of a sudden I had these. They're noticing them more now that they've been treated. So that is from side sleepers. I get them too. Um, that's something we would treat with like microneedling, radio frequency microneedling. Retinols are great for that too, but some of us just have that and sleep's important. So um, we're gonna go ahead and treat him real quick too. So he is also on a lot of social media, TV, radio, mm -hmm. things like that. So he is not somebody that I want to completely wipe out movement on. So I'm actually going to be dosing a little bit more conservatively, considering that any of my red carpet people, VIPs that are on TV, things like that. I'm actually going to really try to, especially actors and things like that, we're going to actually keep some of that motion and how we do that is by dosing accordingly. So we're actually going to be doing only 24 units here. If I was trying to get rid of this, I'd probably be doing closer to 40. Okay. Mm. But he needs to be able to look manly, have some animation and men look good with character. So mm. mad face again quick poke there mm -hmm. and then one more injection poke here that mm -hmm. one's on periosteum and then I'm actually gonna float up quick poke that one there I inject my needle all the way and then as I am pulling out I'm injecting that socks out mm -hmm. you okay no it's nothing okay quick poke mm-hmm and then a little more here. So remember, I'm angled in and I'm depositing tox as I'm withdrawing that needle. And then I am putting a little bit here just because he has that bulk. All right. And then we're gonna do your forehead and then you're done, my dear. Raise all the way up. Quick poke, so mm -hmm. deep down to periosteum in that area. Same thing here. These ones are pretty easy. I'm gonna be a little less deep here and here. And then these guys right above the brows, I'm gonna come extremely superficial right there. And I'm just basically getting a little clearance there, almost like um, intradermal right there. And then one more. And then we pray. <laughs> 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 That's it.